Hey, everybody. I'm Asia Epperson, and I'm with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. This is Hellblazer Biz with your one and only host presenter, me, Chris Gordon. Thank you all for tuning in. For those of you who are returning, thank you. I appreciate all your support. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, thank you for joining me, and I hope you listen to more and check the back catalogue at hellblazerbiz.com. You can also check it out and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, Spreaker, and more, please subscribe and rate. Thank you very much. And you can also follow me at HellblazerBiz on Twitter and Instagram, or search HellblazerBiz on Facebook, and you'll find me. Subscribe to the page to get all the latest updates. Thank you. Today's guest I bring you is fantastic. Such a bundle of joy. Uh, so much fun to talk to. And yeah, she's currently on a show with Oprah Winfrey, so it doesn't get much better than that. She's also an American Idol finalist. So without further ado, I introduce you to Asia Epperson. I have the honour and the privilege of the company of Asia Epperson today, who is currently on the great show Green Leafs, which is on B. No, that's on O W N, isn't it? Green Leaf. Yes, on, oh, this on yes. Like own, yeah, own, and B E T. You're on. You're playing Kim on Bobby Brown's story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. So I just pressed the wrong thing and pressed the camera off instead of the mic. <laughs> It's going, to be, it's, okay. going, it's going to be one of those ones. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting interview, let me tell you. <laughs> cool. Um, I, do, I will say now, it's actually, I, I do try and do a relaxed one, so I, I don't like all this like, strict questions and stuff, so I, I have conversations with people. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, I'm all open, so let's do it. Cool. Okay, so first of all, you came to, I think you came to the attention, you, you you auditioned and became a finalist. Well, actually, you auditioned and then you turned down and you came back and you turned up in the final of American Idol. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs> How did you know that little extra tidbit? <laughs> I see, it's all here. And I know these things. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah, that is true. I, um, Which is why I always tell everybody, like, perseverance, determination is key and that you should never let anyone tell you no, because what a lot of people don't know is that, yeah, when I, uh, when I auditioned for American Idol, um, when I did the first, there's like little, um, levels, there's, there's mm-hmm. levels that you go through before you get to Paula, Simon and Randy. And, um, the very first level, um, I went and I performed and, The guy told me, you know, I'm sorry, you're not what we're looking for this season. And I was like, yeah, I didn't come all the way out here to hear that. (laughs) So I went out to the car, changed my outfit, changed my hair, went back in there again, snuck my way through there. Let me ask that. (laughs) Snuck my way Mm -hmm. through there. And you know, went on the very opposite end of the Georgia Dome because they had like little tables with, um, you know, some judges and producers and just people of the show that are there to pick the contestants to, yeah. you know, to allow you to go on through the next level. Mm-hmm. And um, they're lined all across the Georgia Dome. And so I went on the opposite side yeah. and went to someone else. And then, hey, you know, I went all the way to the finals. So you just... You never know. You may not be one person's cup of tea that day, mm-hmm. but you can go to the next person in the same day and you'd be everything that they ever you know, <laughs> wanted. So you just never know. You can't take no for an answer. So, yeah, I ended up being a finalist by, uh, 
you know. <laughs> by sneaking out. <laughs> no taking now and sneaking by, back in. <laughs> sneaking, by sneaking back in, man. Yeah, sometimes you just got to you gotta make it happen. Exactly. If you want to follow your dreams and you've got the passion that you want to do that, then, yeah, you, sometimes you've got to do it. Like you say, you know, just because one person said that, it doesn't mean someone else can. Exactly. Not everybody's going to open the door for you. Sometimes you got to kick the door down yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I remember I did something where it wasn't the same, anywhere near the same scale, but I went to a Comic Con last year as a, my first ever time as press. And I've been given okay. this, pre I've been given the press pass. Now the people who were there were uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I can't remember who else there was. Alan Tudick. Couldn't remember his surname. <laughs> but it was being okay. a big guest there. And I, I, I went to actually, I actually went to see and speak to a guest who had been on my show before. And you have to get past this like barrier of people <laughs> as well. And you know, yes. I just looked at them. I was just like, I gave them a, I showed them a press pass. I said I'd like to go up and have a chat with them and talk and make, you know do a quick on the spot interview. And this wasn't any like Benedict Cumberbatch. It was actually Trisha Helfer, who's a big actress anyway. But I, she's been on my show, and I was just like, "No, not with this cal you, 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 you know, You're having a laugh, not with this caliber of guest. You've got no chance whatsoever of getting anywhere near them." And I was like, "But she's been on my show." I said, "Those three have also been on my show." I said, "I just want to say hello." Right. <laughs> and they were like, "No, no, you're not going to get. You won't get it." And I was like, "Well, why? You know, what's I've got, why is the press pass there if you're not going to let people in?" So I, kind of, I did the same thing. I snuck around and went to see someone else. And then kind of just, I, I, I just, in fact, I just bypassed them completely when I went around and just snuck in and was like, yeah. I'm going to get my chat with these people. Yeah. yeah, that's sometimes you just, you got to do what you got to do, man. As long as you're not hurting anybody or in the process or doing anything like that, then hey, it's free game. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and I, I, I hear that a lot, not that, you know, sneaking around, but <laughs> it's all about the passion. You've got to have a real good passion for these things, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the acting world, uh, because I think the amount of times you do get let down, I mean yourself, because you're, you're, you know, you're a singer as well as an actress, so you've got two, you're right in it there with two major places. Oh, yeah. And yeah, the amount, I think... I was shocked when I first started talking to actors because, as I say, you know, the ones you see all the time in the big movie, like, it's the top 3%. There's 97% of actors are working really, really hard, but it's only 3% you'll see in the top, you know, in these films because that's all, they're just, they're the ones who suddenly got there. Um, and there's all, and there's hours and hours spent doing your self tapes and your auditioning and, um, it's, you know, it's very similar to me getting a, an actress like yourself because, you know, the amount of times I email people um, and <laughs> emailing out and asking and asking, and then I'll, you know, a hundred times, and I'll, I might get one guest from it, that which happens to be a great guest. But <laughs> yep. even so, there's, you know, yep. there's a lot of work involved, and it's, it, you know, it, it's a it's a hard industry. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, um, it's a, it is a lot of time and a lot of work and energy involved, and you know. But I mean, when it's something that you really want and that you really really want, you'll do it. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And that's just uh, that's just what it is. Like you gotta, you're gonna hear a lot more no's than you are yeses. So you just gotta be prepared for that in itself. Exactly, and that's what I mean. You've got to have that passion to drive you through. Because if you don't have it, then you know that's where people fall at the wayside. And you see a lot of people, you know, they do give up because they just it's too much, and they just haven't got you know that drive inside. Mhm. Mm yep. Exactly. Uh, and I know your drive is even more, as I say, because obviously, very um, sadly, I know I've been to, you had an accident as well, nasty accident, and you, you, but you've again talking about perseverance, you pulled through all that too. And, and Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. It was a pretty bad accident I had about uh, five years ago. Well, going on five years now, mm -hmm. been about four and a half years. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I had a 50 50 percent chance of living and i made it and um you know it took a lot of time to recover and get back to to normal life mm -hmm. and i had to teach myself how to walk again and how to talk again wow. and how to you know just be mobile and um not only physically but just you know in my spirit as well and in my mind and it was a, it was a lot of work so yeah i I've always been a, uh, I've always been a fighter, you know, <laughs> yeah. I've always, 
I've always had to prove myself. I grew up with all boys, so you know that didn't take it easy. To, easy on me it wasn't like they were like oh this is little sis Mm -hmm. this is this is our sister like no you know I was one of them so I grew up just in a very strong family um um spiritually and physically as well you know um so I have a very good family foundation that's always kept me you know, um, grounded Mm -hmm. and, and, and just strong, you know, and driven and, and very supportive family. Um, that's always just had my back and, and supported and supported me through every decision that I made, whether they agreed with it or not, you know, (laughs) um, they're, they're there. So I think that just, uh, you know, a combination of all of those things, a strong family unit and a strong relationship with God and, and, um, and, you know, all of that and my own personal Mm -hmm. drive that I have, it's just a combination for, you know, fearlessness, strength. Yeah, no, fantastic attitude to have. How old were you when you started singing? Um, If I may ask. (laughs) Young, young, I guess. I mean, my mom said, I was singing before I could talk so (laughs) I mean I've been singing but I I remember actually started I started writing music and started writing songs when Mm -hmm. I was six yeah wow Mm -hmm. writing at six as well I was piano yeah I was writing songs I was playing piano um my grandma had me in everything every type (laughs) of dance class piano class anything I've I've like always been very hyper. Mm-hmm. So they, I think they just tried to like overload me with just activities <laughs> and things to do. Yeah. So my whole life revolved around music and sports. Excellent. So anything that was music or performance related, um, piano lessons, dance lessons, um, performing at talent shows and at church and weddings and funerals and just any any opportunity I had to just be performing Mm -hmm. I was doing that and I was in every sport that there was gymnastics cheerleading jazz gymnast uh uh, tap um track uh, softball like everything so um I think it just I started writing music super young like six when I started playing piano okay that's a, that's a great way to start to, to, to get into it I say you know very talented at age six to be able to uh, <laughs> just to, to start oh, writing yeah. and playing piano and playing doing your own compositions oh yeah I was in middle school and I would like skip class to like go to the bathroom and sing the songs that I wrote for my friends I'd be like meet me in the bathroom meet me in the bathroom <laughs> And they would like come to the bathroom and I would be like, tell me what you think about this. And I'm like yeah. singing a song that I wrote in class, just not paying attention. <laughs> oh dear. I play, I tried to learn the piano when I was younger, but I just couldn't get my fingers over the keys. And I've got to say, I, I ended up playing trumpet because I got bored with piano. <laughs> so I started playing the trumpet instead. Oh, and trumpet's fun though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> noisy. <laughs> really annoying. Oh, yeah. it could annoy my it could annoy my parents quite a lot you've also had a great obviously sure. music career as well later on being I mean Def Jam you've worked with him um, Babyface Kenneth, Kenneth Babyface Edmonds as well so that's some pretty big names there yeah yeah I um, actually uh, Babyface discovered me when I uh, when I was on American Idol actually mm-hmm. and um uh, he uh, he called me up and said he wanted to meet with me and we met and started working together and then he took me over to L.A. Reed at um, at Def Jam and went over to went over there and started working on an album and um, L.A. Reed actually ended up leaving Def Jam and going to Epic Records so I kind of just got lost in the shuffle of that whole movement because mm-hmm. I didn't you know. I didn't go over there, so I was just kind of stuck over there at, at, at Island Def Jam, just kind of chilling, while the CEO went on to a different label. <laughs> so um, that that situation kind of, you know, just unfolded. But um, Kenny and I are still very, very great friends, and we, mm-hmm. we still work together. We actually did um, some of the music together. Well, he did the whole soundtrack for the Bobby Brown story okay. on BET. 
he did the entire soundtrack and I actually um, did some of the background vocals for the records. Okay. So oh, yeah, okay. we still work together and everything like that. And, um, and, you know, we've had a few conversations about getting back in the studio and working mm-hmm. on some new music to release as well. So people should be looking out for that too. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you've actually worked. With, I say you worked with some great names, and I know you, we, before your accident, you looked. You worked with Shaka Khan as well in the music. That's one you got your role in there. So, who would you love to work with? That's who I'd love to know. Who would you really love to work with? As I'll do it as a singer, and then I'll do it as an actress. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. So, who would I really love to work with in music? I would really love to work with Pharrell. Mm-hmm. I would love to work with Pharrell. Um, I would love to work with. Um, ooh, <laughs> there's so many people. There's so many people. Um, <laughs> trying to think who else would I like to work with in music I mean I would love to just sit in on a session with Mariah Carey (laughs) (laughs) I don't really care like if we're necessarily working together or not I just Mm -hmm. would like to just like sit in a session with Mariah that would be amazing (laughs) um and then acting wise um I would. Re- are you talking directors or other actors? See, I split that question out into two as well. Which director? Which 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 director would you love to have direct you? <laughs> right, um, Quentin Tarantino. Oh yes, <laughs> fair enough. Straight out of there. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Um, love him. Um. Also, uh, oh man, there's so <laughs> many. It's so hard to think. Um, and then acting wise, um, I would love to do something with Tiffany Haddish. I think mm-hmm. she's so great. I think she's so funny. <laughs> And her energy, I think we would be, like, hilarious together. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. I think you probably would as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, I, I, I agree with you on Tarantino. I think he is... Uh, if there could be any one dream guest I could get on my show for a direct, it would be Tarantino. But I'd just be lost because I wouldn't be able to speak. Because one, he talks at 10 million miles an hour. And two, he knows everything about every single film that's out there. And I'll just be like... (laughs) I know. I know. That's crazy. He... I would would definitely just be like, what do you want me to do? Okay. Like... Yeah. What do you need? (laughs) I I had the pleasure of speaking to someone. He He had a part in Django Unchained. And he said, he goes, yeah, he's worked with Tarantino. And he was just like, he was just said the guy, he'd come in every morning, like a lot of directors and I'm not knocking, you know, some of them would just be like, right, let's get on, let's get on with the day. He said Tarantino would come in where they'd all be sitting. He goes, what are you waiting for? We're making a movie, guys. And he was just like, you know, really, really energetic and <laughs> and spurs I everybody. Love that. <laughs> so it was just, yeah. I love that. Yeah, he's, he's, and he's, he's, his work is just phenomenal. Uh, actually, I watched Django Unchained in full for the first time about three or four weeks ago. I've not seen it in full before, and it's—I mean, I love Christoph Waltz as well. Waltz as well as an actor, he's brilliant. But, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it was just—I mean, that's yeah. Every single film of Tarantino's, I could, I just love. <laughs> but, me too. Me too. <laughs> Excellent. Do you prefer singing or acting? Um, I mean, I love both. Because they're both just, a, you know, a creative outlet. Mm-hmm. I started with music first. So music is always, you know, kind of yeah. like my first love, the first boyfriend, mm-hmm. you know. Um, 
but the more I started doing acting, I just, I fell in love with acting, you know? And, um, but I always just try to incorporate any, any opportunity that I get to try to incorporate my music or, or anything into any of the projects that I work on. I always try to do that. Yeah. So I always try to incorporate music in some way, shape or form. Um, and some way or shape or form, it always comes back to me too. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I love music, but, um, I love acting. It's so it's, it's, so, it holds just a different place. I have like a different place in my heart for acting than I do with music. It's, yeah. it's very, music is very personal. Mm-hmm. And I think acting is, um, more, just entertainment i don't know it's just more like yeah it's it's you know like you know when when i'm in the studio and i'm writing a song it's like this is a very vulnerable personal moment for Mm -hmm. me that i'm right regardless of whatever i'm writing i'm really telling the story of myself yeah or of my friend or my mother or my father or my brother, my story, Mm -hmm. something that I seen happen versus acting. I'm playing someone else. I'm not, it's not Asia. It's whatever my character is. And I become her, Yeah. you know? So it's different. It's a different type of creative, you know, energy that I mm-hmm. give when I'm acting um, versus when I'm writing a, a song. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand that. It's the, yeah, very, very different. But like I say, I mean, singing is personal because I say you are. You're writing everything about your own experiences. So I can, you know, it's, it's very moving. Um, and act, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, even acting as well, because I get a lot of things that are different between acting, between acting on stage and acting on screen as well, because there's a big difference there. And how you do it as well, and oh, big Because uh, I, I used to big do it a lot. Difference. I used to do stage acting in school and did qualification. Then I was in amateur dramatics. So I've done pantomime dames. I've done Macbeth. I've done musical. Wow. Um, before I was eight, well, before age nineteen, I did all that. I loved it so much, uh, but just life steered me in a different direction. It's steering me back now, twenty years later. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you never know where life is going to steer you. That's the thing, you know, and and um you just should use one thing to build another. I mean, I'm a person with many goals and aspirations and many dreams. And I just think one thing should build off of another, Mm -hmm. you know, and you never know what's gonna, you know, what's going to take the lead. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, um, for example, this one, three is only three years ago. I restarted doing this and it was all it was, was, I think the reason I call Hellblazers, there's a show on TV called Constantine and the fans are called Hellblazers mm-hmm. and the show got canned and it was, a, it was a big shame. And I couldn't speak on Twitter. People were asking on Twitter and I was trying to give motivational talks and stuff to people. But I, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to give motivational talks. It just wouldn't work. And then just end up doing a podcast of five minutes doing impressions and making people laugh. And then I ended up talking to people, and I was like, you know what? I'm get I, I enjoy this. It's given me reminiscence of where I was, and three and three years on, I've done. I've been in one film. Two years, I was in a film last year, um, with a speaking part in the film, an independent film. I'm now presenting at premieres and screenings in London, and doing Q and As, and and it's building up. I've yeah. got someone who wants to sponsor and do the TV. I've got right. I've you know. I want to write, I've got the idea for a film, a documentary film, I'm right. and it does, it's, you're right, no matter what you do, it all spurs up, and it, spurs, it comes right back at you, no matter what you're doing in life, yeah. because whatever you've got a real, what your underlying passion will always come through. It always comes back, yeah. Excellent, I mean, so. yeah, and I mean, you've had some, I mean, obviously, before we talk about Greenleaf and things, I mean, I, I know you're in, you went straight out of Compton as well. Now, if someone is a, a young actress like yourself coming into one of the biggest films which went out there, <laughs> how was that? I know that was like my first big role. First, I didn't even know that I, I first of all did not even know that that movie was going to be as big as it was. Mm, it just I didn't took off. know. 
Yeah, because when I auditioned for it, it was literally just like, you know, a couple lines, like two, three lines. Mm -hmm. And it said feature film. It didn't even have a title of the name for it. So I didn't know, you know, that it was going to be as as big as it was. I had no idea. And I still didn't know. After we got done filming it, I still didn't know that it it was going to be the biggest one of the biggest the biggest film in what 2015 2015? yeah i think some 2015 i think it was yeah huge and you know i was naked so it was like even better like, <laughs> so was great. <laughs> great it's on the big screen yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone can see it and it's, it's, it just happens to be the biggest film that you, yeah you were just thinking of do this one little part and it's in a film and that yeah, it became yeah. <laughs> the biggest block yeah. of <laughs> The biggest, of course. That's just in true Asia Epperson fashion. <laughs> yeah. I, my saying is expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say with me. Expect the <laughs> unexpected. Whatever you think that, oh, it might not happen like that, or no, that's impossible, or I don't ever see it going like that. Like, however, though, that's what will happen in my life. <laughs> 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 oh no, that's pretty awesome. Uh, it really is. I mean, and obviously from there you've had various other roles, but obviously we're on now because you've got a recurring role, obviously in a, a main role in Greenleaf uh, on own. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, I mean, your character is Tasha Skanks, which made me laugh because I knew a skank called Tasha once. <laughs> if you t <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had to say that. I was just <laughs> it made me chuckle when I saw oh, the name. <laughs> Of course, so, yeah, I mean, everyone's so, like, Tasha Skanks? Who came up with that name? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty wild name. It's not anything else. Exactly, it's a pretty weird and wild name. So what, what can you it say? It is, but you know, hey, it's my husband's name. He gave it to me. <laughs> True. So what, what's the show about? Obviously, I've, I've read it's a, you know, where's it set and what's it all about? So... It's a drama, and it's a, um, it's a, um, it's a show about, uh, church mm -hmm. and about the drama that goes on, um, behind closed doors that we don't ever hear about in the churches and especially in the African community, the African American community. Yeah, And so it talks um, a lot about, you know, there's everything, everything that in real life that happens, um, money, um, drugs, mm -hmm. um, going back and forth in your beliefs, mm -hmm. in your spirit, um, homosexuality. Yeah. Um, you know, it just touches on all the real life things that people go through that act like don't happen to people that go to church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow people think that people that go to church, and it's mostly the people that go to church, think that they're exempt from, like, real-life situations. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so um, that's what the, 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 the show is about. I play a preacher's wife, um, and my husband has a problem with gambling, Okay. And he's addicted to gambling, and he has um, basically lost our church. We lost our church oh, okay. due to his gambling, mm -hmm. and uh, and we came to this town um, to basically just get revenge on the Green Leafs. And the show is called Green Leaf. Yep. Um, to get revenge on the Green Leafs because. Um, the head pastor killed my husband's father. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we go to the town to give revenge on that family for doing mm -hmm. that to my husband. So that's the gist of the show or and, and, and my character on the show. Awesome. Now, the head of the Greenleaf family, if I remember rightly, so it's Keith David, isn't it? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yes. he's he's uh, just he's another fantastic. He's got such a the voice that just draws you in. He's brilliant. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Fun. He does. <laughs> it's great. I was going to say actually, I kind of do kind of sort of know where you're coming from because I'm the son of a preacher man. <laughs> but 
to use a good old, <laughs> good old uh, soul song because I actually my dad was a minister for for 30, 30 years. So I've seen, oh, wow. I've, I've seen, I saw quite a lot in the churches as well. Not as to the extent I think as you know, uh, as a place where it's a bigger population, but because mo most of them were yeah. in their seventies and eighties, <laughs> so so they couldn't really do no. <clears throat> too much. But yeah, I, kind of, I know where you're coming from. So it does sound a very good premise. And obviously, the show is is it written or produced by Opera? Opera? Yeah, it is. <clears throat> and Oprah, she's in it as well, um, isn't she? Is a producer, and yeah, she's a. Pro producer and uh, an actor in the, in, the, in the show. Fantastic. What's it like working with her? You, oh, yeah. She's just a huge personality. Uh, I haven't worked with Oprah yet. Okay. Um, o Oprah, the, she has like like one or two episodes that she'll come in. Mm -hmm. So she'll, she'll come in, kind of have her day, her time, and then she's out of there, you know? She's not hanging around set and stuff. Yeah. But she's very, you know, involved from head to toe um, when it comes to me and my clothes and my fingernails, mm -hmm. what my fingernails look like, um, to everything. Like, when I walk on, when I walk to set and they're like, oh, Lady O said that she wants us to take a picture of um, your outfit or she wants us to take a picture of your nails and make sure we approve them through Lady O first. <laughs> so, so she's very involved um, as far as just everything about Tasha, everything about my character. She's yeah. super like, yeah. Fantastic. That's really cool. I mean, I did actually yeah. love when they they all signed it for Oprah for president as well. I thought that would be <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Oprah for president, yeah. right? Yes, Oprah for president. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I yeah. concur. I concur. <laughs> Definitely. I won't get into politics. Don't worry, Asia. <laughs> uh, I know, right? I'm like, oh, how long is this gonna be? Because I have something. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. I actually woke up yesterday to see what the latest thing was when he talked about the, um, the, the the storms and the hurricanes, and it was just like, there's another hand on you. <laughs> How could you? Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I'll every cut that time. bit out, don't worry. And every time. It is, it is. Um, so obviously, I mean, you know, Greenleaf's out on the own channel at the moment, but you are also been doing, like you mentioned before, the Bobby Brown story, which is on BET, which is why I said it was yeah. OWN at the beginning, because the last time I called it BET, not BET. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to be trying to be yeah. so here's, yeah, so on, play, oh, no worries okay um so yeah, you, play, you play Kim Ward on that don't you yep I play Kim Ward which is um Bobby Brown's um baby's mother she has two of his children mm -hmm. um uh i'm the one that he left whitney houston for he left for whitney houston yeah, yeah. so i'm his you know kind of his his hometown sweetheart you know i'm from boston he's from boston mm -hmm. you know we grew up together we met as teenagers and you know that was uh I was uh, the, you know, the hometown sweetheart. So we were friends, you know, we had a, we had a special, a special bond. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then we, we were together and then he ended up leaving me for Whitney Houston. And then we had another little fling when he was with Whitney and mm -hmm. then I got pregnant again and had our second child. <laughs> so that was a little bit of drama with that. Yeah. Um, but that was awesome. That whole, that whole experience of, of shooting that was like, it was amazing just because of how involved everyone was. Um, you know, Bobby Brown was on set every single day, making oh, wow. sure, <laughs> yeah, making sure everything was, was uh, how it was supposed to be. And yeah. th that his story was told the right way. And, you know, and people like Babyface, mm -hmm. you know, coming um, coming there every day because, you know, and then we had Tommy there, which is Bobby Brown's brother, which mm -hmm. was his manager for 25 years. You know, he was there, just the people that were really there and, and making sure that everyone was emulating these people correctly and doing yeah. the right things. So it was good. It was really good. 
That is pretty impressive. I was going to ask actually whether he, how much input did he actually have on the show, and that sounds like he had a lot. So. A lot. Oh yeah. Fantastic. What other projects? Are, you, are there anything else that you've got coming up or working on at the moment that you're allowed to talk about, maybe? Um. Or any songs? I or any... can't. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there are some things in the works. Good. There are some things in the works. Um, so yeah, just be expecting a lot more from me, just in every way. You know, I'm working really hard. I'm, I'm grinding. I'm making sure that, you know, everything is getting set up the way that that I would like my brand. Um, getting my music together. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really focused on really aiming and zoning in towards certain projects yeah. of the direction that I want to go. Mm -hmm. So it's been, um, you know, building my team, getting my team together. Um, so it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of daily work of, you know, just keeping things on track and, um, and, um, yeah, that's just I have I have some things. No, I know how it is. I know, I know if you can't, I know there's quite a lot of things that yeah you you can't talk about because it's so early and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But be but just be prepared to see and hear more from me. That's for sure. Oh no, that's fantastic! It'll be great to see more. I mean, if you've just been talking to you for the past forty minutes or so, you've got such a great, vibrant personality. It is great. I oh, can't wait to see more on the screen. So. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Is there any, before I'm going to ask you actually, I've got a signature question. Um, sure. Which I, <laughs> it's a fun, it's a strange one. Don't worry. Uh, the, the premise behind this: last year, one of my guests was a guy who's been a puppeteer with Jim Henson for thirty years, as well as being uh -huh. in like Labyrinth and Star Wars and stuff. And someone sent this question in, and I was like, this is such a, a cool out there question. I want to ask everyone. <laughs> so, are you still, are you still there? You froze on me. I'm here, I'm here. Okay. So if you could have a Muppet created after your after you, a Muppet character created after you, what mm -hmm. kind of which Muppet would it be and why? It could be a new one or you could even have one or as close to you can as maybe one that's already there. <laughs> if I could have a Muppet created of yeah. me. Uh huh. What kind of character would it be like? Oh my gosh, it would be, let me see, if I could have a Muppet that was created, <laughs> if I could have a, um, if I could have a Muppet after me, uh, named after me, it would be, um, it would be a motivational, like, inspirational motivational high energy muppet mm -hmm. it would be a it would be like a like, just this super high huh i was gonna say so it brings to mind red from fraggle rock was it red the little one with the, the pigtails pig she's always so vibrant and and, <laughs> and energetic I don't know which one that is. Oh, okay. That's because that shows me my age. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's my age. <laughs> but yeah, that would be my Muppet. Excellent, excellent. That's a really good choice. Um, I say I've had so many different answers. It's, it's, hilarious. it's a really good question because it just, people just thought something. So I've actually got myself, I actually sang, I, I recorded the thing as Kermit. And he's, he's like, why? Are there so many songs about rainbows? <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my Kermit. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> as I said, before I let you go, Asia, is there anything you'd like to say to people who are listening? One final thing before I stop the recording. Um, one final thing. Um, man, just, uh, I don't know. Stay focused on your on your on your goals. Be productive. Be proactive. Don't take no for an answer. 
turn turn the nose into maybes. When someone says no, just be like, oh, that means maybe. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, stay as close to your family and friends as possible and stay close to your spiritual leader, whoever that may be. Mm-hmm. And um, that's it. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Asia, for your time. That was absolutely fantastic. I hope everybody enjoyed listening to that. As I said at the beginning, please subscribe and rate me on iTunes, YouTube, and more at Hellblazerbiz. Just search me and you'll find me. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it all. And I shall speak to you and I'll see you next time.